Action! Right. Okay. So, what are we reviewing today? Uh, the bottle. It's a short film. And it'll stop animated. Okay. Let me just find it. On Wikipedia. So, how are you today? Good. Cool. Okay, cool. What are we going to talk about? Let me have a look at that. Right. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Okay. Okay, so are we doing this? Mm hmm Okay. And... <sighs> Hello, and welcome to The Noobs in Disguise. The podcast for people who really don't care about film. And I'm Keaton, and as you already know, this is my co-host, Luca. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to be talking about The Bottle, which is a short film that I loved. I've seen it like 300 times. It's so good. And I just think, I think when you see it again and again and again, you realise that it, I think it has a deeper meaning about what our society is currently. Don't you agree, Luca? Oh, no, go on. What? How? I'm just thinking that, as we've all seen, mm -hmm. this film mm -hmm. here has two very childlike figures, one made of sand, mm -hmm. one made of snow. Mm -hmm. And they communicate very simply mm -hmm. through a bottle where they put in small trinkets of their different environments in order to show each other how they live and what their cultures are. And I think in these troubled and divisive times, with the rise of populism and a re-emergence of racism and nationalism, I think this tells a really important story about cultural unity, multiculturalism, and friendship above all. Well, I'd say not childlike, but innocence. Yeah, they are, they are innocent. I mean, but there is, there is the psychology of people and with the psychology of people are naturally drawn to innocent characters. Yeah. Like um like robots, like um R2 D2 and BB eight, and also like these sand characters. Because they're childlike and they're innocent and because our brains are hardwired to want to protect and nurture innocence and children, basically. So I think films like this really prey into that psychological that psychological trigger that we have with innocence and childlike behaviour. Well, I don't... Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. I like... I also, I did like the film also. Mm -hmm. I thought it was about friendship. Through, even though they're really far apart, they yeah. can still find a way to, like, mm -hmm. communicate with each other. Yeah. Though they're both in an isolated place. Yeah. Where they, there's no one there. They're, I think they're both quite lonely. They're trying to they find lonely. a way to communicate yes. with each other. And it's about how, like, our humanity, or even our um, sand ballity, um, is sort of... We are a social species. Yeah. Well, they are a social species. Yeah. And, you know, we need to be able to connect with each other, even though... Even yeah. though we're millions of miles apart, yeah. we can still find the barest form of human connection and cling on to it because that is what our species survives yeah. on. And you can kind of learn from other cultures and yeah. think like they get the shells and seaweed and pebbles and then they put it on and they adopt, kind of take their own identity from that yeah. and they learn about each other. And, and they take their identity from the trinkets of a shared culture and past. Yeah. And I think that's beautiful because if you look at the division that's currently being sown all across the world with people retreating into their own shells and retreating into their own countries. I think we need more than ever a film like this who, that can truly say to people culture and other people's culture is beautiful and we must celebrate that. Yeah. I'd also say it's love as well. They will go you know, all the way, even going through the sea and like killing each other. Yeah, that, that, is, that is something I really wanted to talk about. I think that 
that moment for me, which we'll be seeing here, is beautiful mm -hmm. because it shows that sometimes our need and our societal need to socialise and to be social and to find friendship yeah. can lead to our own doom in a way and I think that's why that's why this is such a bittersweet film. Yeah, I think it's true to the film, you know, it makes you care so much about the piece of sand yeah. and some snow. I do, I care. I really care about these characters, these characters that we can see. Yeah. And I just think it's it's a beautiful film. Yeah. Also, the animation was really good. Oh yes, the animation was so good. I mean, the stop motion yeah. was beautiful, and there's. I wanted to talk about how um, I think simplistic animation styles, and uh, the simplistic animation style that we see in this film, really adds to the narrative in yeah. a way, because there's no flashy, there's no sort of flashy. No. No. There's no flashy special effects and there's no dialogue at all. No, it's just kind of the sand and the... It's just the sand and the snow and just this beautiful, simple story. And I think when there's no flashy visual effects or when there's no sort of high-budget CGI, you can really focus on the story. Yeah. I think the story itself is fascinating because... Yeah. The I Carl Young had an idea of archetypal stories within culture. Yeah. Where there were only seven different types of story. This is also in a book that I think you should I think everyone should read. It's called The Seven Types of Story. And it talks about uh, quite unoriginally that there's only seven types of story. Yeah. yeah. And it's like hero saves person in distress, mm -hmm. hero foils evil plan, mm -hmm. things like that. And I think this and I think bottle here represents a new archetype in my opinion yeah two individuals yeah find friendship against the odds yeah and how even far apart they are they will yeah yeah and i think that that is beautiful because i want to see more of these films yeah because i want to see more of these very simplistic films with this amazing just very stark animation style talking about these beautiful, beautiful things in such a compelling way. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just... And also the sand animation, like... <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's real sand. What they did was yeah. they... And I think, even then, m the making of this film is, is a story in itself because they had to painstakingly move this huge ball of sand and snow and... And snow and they had to move these... They had to move these things for shot after shot after shot and that must have yeah. taken days or even months yeah. to make like a five minute film and I think that determination to tell this story yeah. is inspiring because yeah. they knew that this story the people who made this film knew that this story needed to be told yeah yeah and I think I think that's really inspiring in its own way yeah no I'd yeah. agree with that and I just I think, well, so I wanted to bring back to that thing about innocence that we yes, were talking about at yes. the beginning. These characters, they're not, could you even describe them as characters? I think so, because yeah. they're not, they're only inanimate objects, it's no yeah. sand, but they yeah, adopt just, identities. Yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, they adopt identities and I think... This is quite interesting because the narrative itself yeah. creates the characters. Yeah. The, ca the characters aren't already set. I mean, the characters change across the story. They change from blobs of sand to having their own identities and personalities and even facial features. And I think that that beautiful and that that narrative way that is a narrative way of telling people yeah. that friendship can change who you are. So I'd say you can call them characters. You can call them characters by the end of the film. So overall, yeah. 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 Great film. Recommend it. Great film. Go and check it out. Um, remember to like and subscribe. 